Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. And today, we are talking about the skill of critical thinking. When I first started completing assignments at the University of Derby, I saw two words on the mark scheme that really intimidated me. They were critical thinking. I didn't know what this meant, or how I could do it, but it turned out to be something that was easier than I had thought, and actually something that I do in my everyday life. What critical thinking means is essentially asking questions and coming to a reasoned judgement. It means not just taking things as they are, but digging deeper and coming to a conclusion based on facts and logic. When at university, you're expected to be critical throughout the process of writing an assignment. When you first receive your assignment, you're critical in working out what you're expected to do and in planning your next steps to go forwards. You ask questions such as, when's this due in for? What am I actually being asked to do? What is meant by the question? And so on. Then, you use critical thinking when you're researching and evaluating the worth or the value of what you're reading. You then apply this critical reasoning when you actually write up your assignment. And then, you're critical when you proofread, by deciding how you're going to edit your work, which sentences you're going to cut, where you've made mistakes, where you might need to do further research, and if and how you've hit the mark scheme. So, critical thinking is something that they had to do throughout an assignment. But, it's not something that you only had to do in your assignments. You actually do it in your everyday life when making simple decisions, and you'll be doing it throughout your student life, and even before that, even when you were considering coming to university in the first place. And so, to discuss how we are already critical before we start university, and how we have a foundation of skills in critical thinking, I am joined by David Richardson. So, hello David, and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast. Before we talk about how critical thinking is something that students have a foundation in, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Hi, Alex. Yeah, I'm uh, David. I'm one of the facilitators at, uh, in the Resource Centre at the Chesterfield campus. So yes, thank you very much for introducing yourself, David. Um, so the first question I want to ask you is, do students already have experience with critical thinking? Yeah, I think it's it's something that we all do naturally, Alex, really. I mean, critical thinking is really just about weighing up the pros and cons and then reaching a decision. So it's something we do normally in everyday life. Um, even something as simple as thinking about what am I going to have for my tea? <laughs> you know, might depend on, well, what's in the fridge? What did I have a tea yesterday? Do I want to eat healthy or do I deserve a treat? So it's just weighing up all those options and that information and reaching a decision. That's That's really all it's about. I love that. It's super simple. What are you going to do for your tea? Even when you go shopping, if you're planning for the food you want to eat, you might think, oh, what am I going to buy for the week, for example? That's another example of critical thinking. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the sort of information that might come into that might be nutritional, but it might be cost. It might be all sorts of things that you're taking into account. And it, a lot of this is really sort of happening subconsciously as well. And you're bringing those things together and then making a decision based on it. And, you know, that's a skill for life. It's, it's something that we develop. Um, as as we go along in the academic sense, but also, you know, in the world of work. And it's the exact same skill that students will be applying to their academic um, lives. They're asking similar questions. It's just about working out what those questions are and what those factors are that they're going to be using to evaluate. Absolutely, yeah. So you mentioned just then about the fact that when you go to the shop and buy something, you might weigh into account how much it costs. Is it on offer, for example? Is the nutritional value? All those factors, you're applying all those things and thinking about them and coming to a conclusion about which one you choose to buy or choose to have for the week. Yeah, exactly. So that's a good example of a small decision where students have applied that critical thinking. What about a bigger decision that students might have come across? Well, I mean, a bigger decision that most people listening to this podcast will have probably taken is, is how do I decide which university to go to? And there might be all sorts of things that come into that decision. You might be thinking about 
the location of the uh, the university. Is it nearby? Do I want a more sort of an independent lifestyle? So I'm going to move further away from home. Should I go to a city? Has it got a good social scene? But you might also be thinking about the, the course. Is it, is it right for me? Is it an area of specific interest? Does it meet all the sort of learning needs that I've got? And then you're probably going on to think about some external information, maybe the the quality of teaching. How is the university ranked? And then we're into sort of evaluating information, aren't we? So who's ranking the who's ranking the university? Is this an official ranking? Is it on a student blog? Have I got friends that have been there? What do family think? And all, all the time you're weighing and evaluating that information and thinking about, is all the information telling me the same thing? And if there are conflicts of information, then you've got to weigh up, well, which which information do I trust more and why? So there are lots of factors there that you might take into account. But ultimately, it's this balancing act. Mm. And it's about where the weight that the weight that you apply to the information that's going to help you to, to, to reach the decision. And I can imagine, actually, with that type of decision, students will spend a lot more time thinking about that and weighing it up than they will do whether a source is reliable or not. And that's probably a much harder thing to weigh up and decide because there's so many universities out there, so many courses... And it's such a big decision, whereas when you apply that to your academic work, there's probably a lot less. So students coming into university have already had experience of evaluating and using critical thinking for a massive decision, as well as also their experience in their daily lives, whether it's choosing what shopping to buy, choosing what you're going to eat, um, or making lots and lots of small decisions. You already have that experience. You have that foundation in critical thinking. And then the, the key for the rest of the podcast that we're going to talk about is how you can then apply that critical thinking to your secondary research and to your assignments. And we're talking about how it applies to the entire assignment process as well. That's uh, everything I wanted to ask you, David. But there's one more question that I asked everyone on the podcast, and that is what advice do you have for a student who wants to be successful? Well, successful is an interesting word, I think, Alex. I mean, I, and I think it means lots of different things to different people. So first of all, I think my advice would be to decide what successful means for you. Um, but more specifically, stay curious, ask lots of questions, don't accept anything, probe, question, and be critical, I think is what I'd say. Some very good advice there. Thank you so much, David. And thank you for outlining how students already are critical. Hopefully anyone listening feels as inspired as I am and you can take that on board and now think you can apply critical thinking because you already have a leg up on this concept that did feel hard at first and you can do it and now we're going to explain how by interviewing academic librarian sally forrest so hello sally and welcome to the success as a student podcast today we've just been talking about how students have a foundation in critical thinking already but now i'd like to talk more about how students can apply that foundation to their academic studies and particularly with you to their secondary research. So before we get into that, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners? Yeah, hello, Alex. Uh, my name's Sally, Sally Forrest. I'm one of the academic librarians and I support students um, from the College of Science and Engineering, specifically students who are studying engineering programmes. And I also support students um, from the School of Arts. And by support, I mean that I work directly with the academics and we do some in-class teaching about the different academic skills that students might need. And I also help students um, through our workshops to find resources, evaluate resources and um, incorporate them into their assignments. And that is exactly why I asked you to come and join us to, to talk about how students can be critical when researching and evaluate their sources. So the first question I've got for you then is critical thinking. How does it apply to completing secondary research for an assignment? Well, I think you're applying critical thinking all the way through from, first of all, you get your assignment brief. So firstly, you've got to understand the question that you're being asked. Um, and then that will give you a good indication of obviously where you're heading. Then you've got to um, understand what you already know. So that may be from your own knowledge, from lectures, from background reading that you've already been given. And by analysing that, you can identify the gaps in your knowledge. And that will then set you on a path to the research that you need to do. And it's a bit like following a logical flow from the question through the research to evaluating the resources and then obviously producing and submitting your fi final assignment. So 
I think that's the key thing. It's those asking those questions all the way through. What's the question? What do I already know? What are the gaps in my knowledge? Where am I going to find those resources? What resources are available? What resources do I need to answer this um, question? Because depending on your subject discipline, obviously the, you may need different types of material. You may be carrying out experiments and you need the data from that. So all, all the way through that process, you're critically evaluating mm. where you are and where you need to get to. So critical evaluation doesn't just come when you've got the sources. It comes before that. It comes in how you structure the search. Uh, to find Absolutely. Them. Absolutely, because if you don't know where you're heading, you don't know what you're looking for. And um, we run an, a workshop on uh, building arguments. So that's about incorporating the evidence into your assignment. And one of the models we've um, been using and been looking at is thinking of a river. So you start off your assignment as the starting point on your journey down the river and that's your introduction you flow through the river bringing in your different arguments and you get to the conclusion and it's all about that logical flow and I think that's a good way of thinking about it so all the time you're undertaking that process of writing you're also critically evaluating the worth of those resources to what value do they add to that assignment mm. to get you the best possible marks so yeah, it's definitely not just about using the first things you find. It's about evaluating, especially when you find yourself over the word limit, which bits you want to use and which bits you might want to use. Or even if you want to use as much as possible, then to let, being selective and uh, reducing the words down uh, that you use for each. Um, so you've used a phrase there a few times. You've said critical evaluation. Can you explain what's meant by that? Well, I think it, it is all about questioning. It's It's... Sometimes students think that if you're being critical of something, it means that you're um, judging it and making negative criticisms mm. of it. But critical evaluation is about judgment, but it's judging things for for their worth and value and credibility and what do they add to your assignment because at the end of the day you want the best possible marks so you want to make sure that you're including the best possible academic resources so that critical evaluation is really asking questions about what is this particular resource why does it add value to what I'm trying to say and um, there are lots of different tools you can use as a part of critical evaluation. So we can talk a little bit about a couple of the tools that you might want to think mm. about using. Um, the first one, and I think this is it's one that always makes students smile a little bit when they hear it because it's called the crap test. <laughs> um, and so it just makes you smile a little bit. But it's actually C-R-A-A-P. Um, and that stands for currency relevance, authority, accuracy and purpose. And it's all about asking those questions. How current is this piece of work? You know, when was it published? How relevant is it? Does it answer the question that I want it to answer? And it's that about adding value to your assignment. Um, accuracy, is it actually saying um, you know, is it giving good evidence? Is it proving that the evidence that it's um, telling me is actually accurate? How has it been researched? And then authority links to that because it's all about who's written it. Um, and then purpose is what have they written it for? So mm. is it a piece of research? Is it a website that's trying to sell you something? Is it a website where there's obvious bias? So it's all about asking those questions and it just gives you a bit of a framework to think about what sort of questions you should be asking. And then the other one is really similar, and that's just called the five W's, and this is where I'll forget them. So it's who, when, why, where, what. Yes. So again, it's asking those questions about those resources. And remember that these could be published resources or they could be um, online internet-based resources. They all need that same critical evaluation. In fact, probably, with internet resources, you need to be even more evaluative and um, apply your critical thinking skills when you're looking at the value of using information from the internet. I love that idea that critical thinking or critical evaluation is about making a judgment and it's about the worth of it, not necessarily being negative, but also finding what its value is. I, I love that way of thinking about it. And um, the two tests that you identified there, the crap tests, actually I think it's a pretty good test. Um, and 
yeah, I think that highlights some of the key questions to ask. The current question uh, is always a, it's, that's the one that can change, I guess, because um, it could depend on what your course is, if something is current or not. So I know in my course there was a uh, for la- I'm studying landlord at the moment, and something current in that would be from 1925, whereas <laughs> in another degree that is ancient. Exactly. Uh, but think of medicine and um, all the papers that are currently being published about COVID-19. That can't um, get more current, really. And it does, you know, every single resource that you use um, needs to be evaluated in the context of the assignment that you're doing. So you may get different questions and different answers from the resources depending on that individual assignment. Um, so it, it, it's only ever got to be taken as a general rule of thumb. You know, as you say, things that are current in one subject are not current in another. Um, so, yeah, definitely evaluate your evidence and your resources in the context of the assignment that you're actually writing. I think that's some really good advice. Um the other part I would would have pulled out from the uh, the test that you went, mentioned there is the purpose part, which is something which can easily be over- overlooked. And it depends on, I guess, what you're reading, uh, what type of source it is. But sometimes the purpose can go behind because people often do write with a purpose. Um, and that can always be important to look at, although it can be easy to, to skip that stage. So what how would you recommend finding out what the purpose of an article is or any source that you find in secondary research? Well I think it I think it probably relates very much to who's written it and where it's being published. Um so I think probably with um journal articles especially if they're academic peer reviewed articles they generally you know the author's got to say where they're coming from what their background is um what the research has been undertaken if it's been funded by a particular body which may bring in some conflicts of interest and potential bias they've got to say that mm. so i think purpose from a journal article is probably reasonably easy to determine from the outset look at the abstract and see what that article is about i think where it becomes more difficult is when it's an internet based resource because um you know you've got to read through what those people are saying and think about um you know if it's a charity if it was greenpeace for example you know they're going to have a very um sustainability agenda and so if they're talking about the oil industry or carbon emissions you know they've got an an agenda there and you've got to be aware of that so I think that's where you you just need to think carefully about who's written or published that particular website or article and and why might they be doing that? You know, are they trying to persuade you in a particular direction? Have they got, um, you know, a political agenda behind what they're saying? Mm. So it's about, I don't think you can see purpose or any of those other um, letters in any isolation. You've got to see them as a complete whole. Yeah, I agree with that. And then you've got the other questions, the who, what, when, where, how and why questions. I guess how, how is not a W, but we'll pretend it's a W. Um, <laughs> so... I guess I only have one more question um, for you about critical evaluation and secondary research, which is about, do you have any advice for how students can translate that, that, that thinking that they've done about that source into their writing? Well, I think it goes back to that, that um, developing an argument within your essay. So, you you know, you've got an essay question. You've got to take some sort of stance or position You've got to decide what your argument is going to be in order to answer that question. And really, to support that argument, you need evidence. And so that's where your critical Mm. thinking about the resources that you found um, build into that. They help build the argument. They help provide the evidence to support your argument. Or you may use evidence that um, counter um, your argument because you want to say, well, this person says A. This person says B and this is Y. So it's all about um, thinking about the resources you've found, understanding what that author is trying to say, and then uh, possibly matching it with what other people have said. So that's called synthesis. Mm. You bring those ideas together and then you build it into your assignment. And um, it just evidences that you've read widely and understood what the other authors are trying to say. 
I agree. I think that's some really good advice there. Um, and we'll continue that advice about how students can get their critical thinking and evaluation into the writing in the next interview, in the next part of the podcast. But before we get to that, I have one final question for you, which is a question I ask to all the guests who come on this podcast. And that is, what advice do you have for someone who wants to be successful as a student? Um, right, OK. I think it's all about taking time to listen so that's listen to what people are telling you in your lectures and I suppose in a way it's also about listen to what other authors are saying when you're reading so it's it's not just listening it's reading but it's all about understanding those messages um, and as a librarian I'd obviously say read widely <laughs> so read lots of different things and don't just um, don't just read the things that support your current belief or understanding read things that challenge you because um you're at university to learn and develop and i think that's a good skill if you're going to be a successful student you've got to challenge your own understanding of things i 100 percent agree that's some really good advice and a very unique perspective on the uh, on the advice as well so yes thank you for everything you've added to this podcast today i really appreciated your time and insight thank you alex so now that we've discussed how you can add critical thinking into your secondary research, we're going to continue our discussion on how we can apply critical thinking to our academic writing. And so next we're going to interview Alex Hudson. So hello Alex and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast today and thank you for giving your time to talk to us and the audience listening all about critical thinking. So first of all, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Alex Hudson. I work in the Derby English Language Centre. So this is a language centre for international students, students whose first language is in English. We give them support for English language, also for academic skills. And we run what are called in-sessional classes. Thank you so much for introducing yourself, Alex. So... Something that your service does, which I thought would be perfect to interview you about today, is you help with academic writing and talking about how students can be critical within their academic writing. And so, so far we've talked about how criticality is something that students have a foundation in. We've talked about how students can apply critical analysis to their secondary research, but now I want to move on to academic writing and how students can really apply their critical thinking skills to academic writing. So, are there any methods that you think that students can use for this? Um, well, I always give them the example of my of myself when I did um, a master's degree a few a few years ago. I thought I thought I was somebody who was you know good at thinking, solving problems, working things out. When I came to write my first assignment, I gave my tutor a draft of what, of what I'd written. And she just gave it back to me and said, um, all you're doing here, she described it as basket weaving. She said, I was just, all I'd done really was say, um, he says this, she disagrees with this. Oh, this person also disagrees with this. And I thought it was being, you know, very evaluative. I was saying what everybody, what everybody thought, what everybody's opinion was. But really, of course, I was not being evaluative in the slightest. So, um, yeah, so I always say to students, just describing what people are saying is not being um, evaluative. You need to say, you need to keep saying to yourself, well, what does this mean? You know, every time you're writing something, why did I think this was an important point to include? Or my favourite, the favourite thing I always say to myself is, is so what you know when I've written down the comment so what why is this important why do I want people to know about this what's what's it going to lead on to what's it what's it connected to why is it why is it relevant hmm. it's definitely the thing that I consider when I uh, when I read is what's the point of this sentence and you've got to make yeah. it clear what what that means and I guess yeah. it comes to that it comes out back to that reason decision part of the definition that we discussed at the start at the end of the day, if you're just considering up all the options but haven't said this is what that means and this is what it comes down to in that evaluation at the end, yeah. then that's then essentially what's the point of everything else you've written? And if you sit sat there thinking, okay, well, what does this mean? Well, you probably can continue going further and explain what the impact of that critical thinking is. 
Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of work in our language classes about how you can use language to, to do this, to make sure that you're being evaluative, because you said, well, what does this mean? So, yeah, all these phrases, when you've made when you've made your point, so you picked out your point from what you've read, making sure that you're adding on your own commentary afterwards. So you're saying things like this means, this shows, this this is important that, or even perhaps, you know, questioning things. Is that is this so relevant? Is this justified? All these all these kinds of statements afterwards. And it's quite interesting because students, especially international students, they always worry about um, like the big words. They want to, you know, learn all the big, big, big words, all these big academic words. But at the end of the day, it's actually the the small words you could say, like things like um, modal verbs, like may, should, this may be the case, this should be what people should do. It's these little words that are adding in the the critical elements to your writing and making it um, evaluative. Definitely. I think there's definitely a good case for using um, smaller words often because they, they're clear and they're understandable by the audience as well. Um, and they often have more of an impact. Um, often some smaller words can actually show how you can connect and what you mean so i use the word however and therefore all the time i actually had to sit swap them out for synonyms because the amount of times i use them but the, the word <laughs> the word however means that what you said before this next sentence is going to oppose that or if i've talked about something negative it's now going to be positive and therefore means as we were saying before this is important because this means that but in one word and i like that because it saves words um, yeah. Yeah. And, and those small words that can be very impactful in terms of showing what to, what you mean and helping to show the the impact of that critical thinking. Yeah, yeah, no, you t- you, you're right. All those linking words, yeah, connect it all together. And yes, they're expressing, aren't they, what, what you're thinking about um, how things connect together, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other advice for how students can actually apply that critical thinking into their writing? Um, well, in our English classes, we always um, give the the PEE method, which I'm sure everybody probably knows about. Our students do anyway. Mm-hmm. So where you the P, you're giving your point. The E, you're giving your evidence. So, you know, from what you've read and the E, you're explaining, well, what does the what does this mean? So that's a. Easy to remember, good little tips to keep in, in your mind. Also helps you with the um, structure of paragraphs because it's you know kind of a three-point plan to um, structuring a paragraph as well as putting in this critical thinking element. Mm. I think uh, the explanation part is probably the, a, a clear point of it, so the, the third element, because no matter what evidence you've used in your work, you need to explain why the evidence is relevant and what that means. And yeah. I've seen it so often when I've seen other people's work that people have used a theory and they've mm. said, or something that a philosopher has said, for example, but they haven't said what that means. How does that add to your essay? How does yeah. it answer the question that you've been given? And um, I actually always end my paragraphs with an owl at the end of that. So I have a link section where I link what I've said before to say clearly, look, this is how all this critical thinking has answered the question, because sometimes it's just not obvious. And Mm -hmm. if you need to make it obvious, that can be useful to do. Uh, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that method's good. I often add a C section Mm -hmm. in there, so it's critical thinking section, where sometimes you can apply criticality if you need to um, Mm -hmm. afterwards, but then that's just a personal preference. The one thing Mm -hmm. I'd mention, actually, is you don't always need to follow this. This is just an example structure. Yeah, it's just something, yeah, just to keep in your head. I mean, once you start, once you start writing, hopefully it'll, it'll flow. And it's just, yeah, just thinking about these things. And as you say, the critical um, element at the end, making sure you've explained what it all means is, um, is really important. So we've talked about critical thinking, how you can get it into your own work and how you can improve your own academic writing uh, through critical thinking. 
and also the PEE method. The final question that I have for you today, Alex, uh, is the final question that I ask to every single person who comes on this podcast. <laughs> and that question is, what advice do you have for someone who wants to be successful as a student? Well, after our, after our discussion today, I think the first thing I have to say is be, be a critical thinker, be aware, and um, be a critical thinker right from... The beginning of the writing process so from the re- you know from the stage of reading also the second thing be a good time manager because I think this is a case of using the time that you've got using it wisely you know it's not a case of worrying oh I've only got um, a couple of hours or a few hours here and there what's important with time is how you actually use that time what you're doing in that time but also as well within that being aware of how you how you actually work time wise so I know myself whenever I start a project or you know something new I always need to allow myself a certain amount of time where I do spend time just staring out of the window or (laughs) looking at looking at books walking around thinking about stuff and I think this you know that's a natural part of the of the thinking process to to get some creativity going some creative ideas started (laughs) definitely Uh, thank you so much for the comprehensive overview of your key points for uh, being successful there's a lot to unpack there and anyone who's listening definitely consider those um um, so thank you very much for your time alex i've really appreciated it you as well thanks alex it's been very enjoyable i've enjoyed it thanks I remember when I first started university and I was trying to be critical, I remember just being so confused by what the buzzword critical thinking meant and how I could apply it to the work I was doing. So now that you've listened to this podcast, I'm hoping that this has been cleared up a bit for you and you understand what is meant by being critical and how you can apply it both to your everyday life and your study. The first of the key points that I want to highlight is that you're already being critical. And now, all you need to do is learn to apply it to your academic writing and also to apply it to your everyday life further by asking more questions. So, this links to the second key point, which is to ask questions. Sally identified two methods that you can use for asking questions when completing secondary research. The first of these is the CRAP test, which stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy and Purpose. The second method is the five W's and the H which is who, what, when, where, how, and why. And both of these are really good frameworks that you can use to be critical in your research, and then you can use these to apply that critical thinking to your writing. So the final key point that I want to highlight is quite a short one, and that is just when you are being critical in your writing, ask the question, so what? This is a great question to ask because it helps you to explain the impact of your critical thinking Later in the series, we have another episode that we're dedicating to critical thinking, where I interview student Joseph Webster about how critical thinking has applied to his student experience and his student journey. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalabar, Tim Zalstra, and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.